Hello everybody, welcome back to the Ash and Stone channel. My name is Chris and in today's episode I'm going to show you how I went about painting Oathmark skeletons. So first things first, I'm going to give the models an undercoat of Army Painter Skeleton Bone. I'll be doing this with a spray can because that's nice and easy. And then I'm going to go ahead and give the model a Xenothal highlight of Army Painter Matt White. A zenithal highlight simply adds a lighter highlight colour to the top surfaces of the miniature while leaving the undersides shaded with the original darker tone. The difference between the highlight and shade here is subtle, but I like to think it helps. Next up we will crank out a crappy old brush and some Citadel Skeleton Horde contrast paint and we're just going to slather that all over the bony areas on the miniature. There's no need to be too tidy at this stage. And we just want to make sure we get a nice light coat over all the bony areas. But we also want to make sure that we don't absolutely drown the miniature in it. This paint will take a while to dry, so if you've got a whole bunch of miniatures to do at once, it's a good idea to go through and do them all, and then by the time we get to the last one, the first one will hopefully have dried and be ready for the next step. Which is, Army Painted Dark Tone. Once again, we're going to slather this all over the model, focusing on the bony areas, and what it's going to do is it's going to deepen the shadows and darken the colour of the bone, and just make the skeleton as a whole look a whole lot more menacing. Again, we just want a nice even coat. Being a thinner wash than the contrast, it will sink into the recesses a lot more. But we just want to make sure we don't absolutely drown the model in it. And next up is Vallejo Iraqi Sand. And what we're going to do is give the model a light dry brush with it which will pick up all the high areas and add a nice little bit of highlighting to all the details. We'll then grab some Vallejo White and we'll mix that with our Iraqi Sand at about a 50-50 ratio. And then we're going to give the upper half of the model an even lighter dry brush using this. Mainly focusing on the skull and the shoulders. And that's the bone done. So next I'll be moving on to the cloth. And for that I'll be using Vallejo English Uniform. This simply gets painted onto all the areas of tattered cloth. Being careful to avoid getting any on the bone that we've already finished. I chose to go with English Uniform for the cloth as it's a nice neutral earthy colour and I wanted to represent filthy mouldering grave cloth rather than the remnants of a brightly coloured uniform or what have you. And this seems to do the job. Once the cloth's done we're going to grab our old favourite Vallejo Chocolate Brown and we're going to paint all of the leather straps. Nothing complex here, just once again be tidy and try to avoid getting it on anything you've already painted. And don't forget the straps on the back of the greaves of a couple of the models. A quick tip on painting straps and other thin areas on models. Uh, what you can do is you can paint the centre of the area first and then move on to paint on the outside. That way if you've got a little bit much paint on your brush that'll be put into the centre of the area and not over onto areas that you don't want to paint. And then as you work that paint off the brush and move it towards the edges of those straps you're far less likely to overload them and end up with paint everywhere. Next I'm going to use some Vallejo Flat Earth to highlight the leather areas. I'm not going to worry too much about being particularly accurate here. All I want to do is hit some of the high areas on the belt and across the shoulders 
maybe a little bit around the ribs. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll know I like to then hit the leather with a highlight of dark sand. Although, in the case of the skeletons, I've chosen not to do that. The reason is I want to keep the contrast between the leather straps and the bone nice and stark. And I feel that adding that dark sand layer to the leather is going to blur them together too much. So we're going to avoid it in this case. Once we've finished with the flat earth, it's on to Army Painter Dark Tone again. And we're going to use that to wash all of the cloth and leather parts that we have just painted. Again, this just adds shading and adds to that dark menacing effect I'm going for. Then it's back to Vallejo English Uniform and we're going to reapply the base colour to the cloth, focusing on the high areas and leaving the recesses with the dark wash in them. This will be followed up with a highlight of a 50-50 mix of English Uniform and Desert Yellow that's going to be applied to the very edges and tips of the cloth. Next we'll move on to painting the wood, which we're going to start with a base coat of Vallejo Camouflage Black Brown. And we simply paint this onto the wooden areas, in this case the spear shafts. Because I'm using a model air colour, it is quite thin, and it will take me a couple of coats to get a decent coverage. Again, I'm going for a dark colour here to stand out in contrast to the bone. Following the black brown, we're going to crack out the Vallejo Silver Grey, and we're going to use this to give a highlight to the wood. I'm going to apply the silver grey as a very light dry brush up and down the shaft of the sphere which will help to imitate the wood grain and also just add a little bit of texturing and detail to the spare shaft. The contrast between the silver grey and the black brown is very stark so to bring those two colours together I'm simply going to apply a wash of Army Painter Strong Tone. Nice and easy. Next up, grab your favourite black, in my case it's going to be Vallejo Surface Primer Black and we're going to paint all the areas that are going to be metal. You don't need perfect coverage on this, but you definitely want to get rid of that stark white that my metals currently are. Also don't forget the shield grips like I did, or you're just going to have to go back and do them all later. Once that's done, I give the skeletons a coat of Tamiya Flat Clear. And I'm going to go and paint the shields still on the sprue with a spray of black paint. To base coat the bronze, we will be using Citadel Warp Lock Bronze. And it will be painted all over the metal areas. Big thanks owed to Michael Anderson, the guy who sculpted these skeletons, for providing an excellent painting guide for ancient bronze on the Oathmark Players Facebook group, which forms the basis of my technique here today. While we have the bronze paint out, we will give the shields a base coat as well. Once that's dry, we'll grab the Nylac Oxide. Yes, I had to look that up. And we're going to slather that all over the areas with just painted bronze. We want to make sure that we cover all of that bronze, but we don't want an even coat. The splotchier, the better. This will add to the random corrosion effect of the ancient bronze. I'll paint the majority of the shield when it's on the figure, but for now I have to do the inside because I won't have access to it when it's glued to the arm of the skeleton. So we'll get the insides out of the way now and we'll worry about the rest of it later on. Next up we're going to use Army Painter Green Tone and we're going to apply this in random areas on the bronze. 
we don't want to cover the entire surface just add random splotches here and there this is going to add more random mottling to the surface and just add in another tone as well don't forget your shields now to tie everything together and bring that bronze tone back to the surface we're going to grab some army painter strong tone and that gets applied all over the bronze areas and you'll see it instantly brings everything together and brings that bronze tone back to the surface I then go through and base everything. Uh, if you want to know more about the grout for the bases, I did do a video earlier. I'll chuck a link somewhere for that. Now it's time to work the shields. So I cut them off the sprue and clean up any excess material. Then with a drop of super glue, the shields are glued onto the arms of the skeletons. Being sure to position them carefully and hold them for a couple of seconds for the glue to stick. Now the shields are glued in place, we can grab our bronze again and we're going to colour the bare plastic on the back of the shields from where we trimmed off the sprue. And then go ahead and apply all the ageing steps to the front face of the shield. So that's Nilac Oxide, followed by Green Tone, followed by Strong Tone. As of right now, the bronze unfortunately looks very flat. So to fix this, we're going to grab some Vallejo Silver Grey. And we're just going to put a very small amount along the edges of the bronze areas. So the edge of the shield, the edges of the spear, the breastplate, helmet, etc. This final step just brings the bronze back to life and I think really, really makes it look good. So, bonus guide. Here's how I did the banner. I started out by cutting a little piece of black material and chucking that down on a bit of wood and then I'm going to rake it with a bit of 120 grit sandpaper. And as you can see, that's tearing some of the fibres and opening up holes and tearing chunks off and really giving this piece a ragged appearance. So just tear at the cloth from different angles and at different places until you get a shape that you like the look of. To attach it to the banner bearer, I'm just going to use a little bit of super glue which I'm going to stick to the cross shaft of the standard and then simply press the material into the glue. You'll want to hold it for a couple of seconds and make sure you don't get your fingers stuck. And there we go. I then glue the banner down to the shaft in a couple of places just to make sure that it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to put a whole bunch of watered down PVA onto the material, which will soak that up and become hard. You may need to do this a couple of times to get the material to be nice and solid, but it is better to do it a couple of times than to absolutely flood the thing. I then grab some Vallejo Black Grey and dry brush the entire banner. After that I'm going to mix in increasing amounts of Vallejo Iraqi sand into that black grey to create lighter and lighter shades and go through and just dry brush the banner along the high points and along the edges to give it a nice faded look. And there we go, a nice and tattered looking rag of a banner. 
if we chuck a bit of white paper behind it you can see all the holes in it and here is the unit as a whole so I do hope you have found something in this video useful thank you for watching and we'll see you next time cheers